Hi, my name is Matthew DeSaro, and I'm a research and development electrical engineer here at Seabird Scientific. Today, I'm going to talk to you all about a very exciting new project we've been working on. We're developing a solid state pH sensor based on the same technology that goes into smartphones and computers. This new method of measuring pH in the ocean offers many advantages over traditional methods, such as glass bulb pH sensors or even having to take water samples. This is a high level explanation of the ISFET, the solid state pH sensor used in the Seabird Scientific CFET V2, CFOX V2, Deep CFOX V2, Float pH, and future solid state pH sensors. Many key concepts are out of scope for a short video, but we will cover the main components that allow this device to measure pH with high accuracy and stability. This is a simplified cross section of the ISFET in a solution representing seawater. This device can be broken down into a few distinct components. First, we have the ISFET die itself. This is a silicon chip, like is used in a smartphone or a computer, and actually functions as a transistor, controlling the flow of electricity. But instead of being turned on and off by an electric charge, it's turned on and off by ions that pass through an ion-selective membrane specifically hydrogen ions, which determine the pH of a solution. Next, we have the electronics that drive and control the ISFET. These can be broken into two blocks. The first, represented by the op amp on the left, keeps a constant current flowing through the ISFET and a constant voltage across it. The second block, represented by the op amp on the right, measures the voltage on the reference electrode. This is the actual signal that's used to calculate pH. Next we have the titanium counter electrode. It's in solution next to the ISFET. When electric charge is placed on it from the counter electrode electronics, it captures sodium ions, increasing the number of chloride ions near the channel in the ISFET and thereby controlling the amount of current flowing through the ISFET. Finally, we have the silver, silver chloride reference electrode. The potential, or voltage, on this electrode is proportional to the concentration of chloride ions and ultimately to pH. More on how this all works next. Now we're going to go into a little bit more depth about how each component works. We'll start with the ISFET die itself. The ISFET is a type of P-channel field effect transistor. The way that a P-channel field effect transistor works is that positive charge in a region called the channel allows current to flow from the source to the drain. Positive charge collects in the channel when negative charge is placed on top of the device. In an ordinary electronic p-channel field effect transistor, that negative charge would come from electrons. However, this is an ion selective field effect transistor. So that negative charge comes from negatively charged ions, which are in the solution on top of the channel. Let's look at the region above the channel in more detail. Specifically, there's an ion selective membrane. This membrane only allows hydrogen ions the source of pH, to pass through. The way that this works is that first hydrogen ions, in proportion to the co their concentration in the solution, pass through this membrane. Then chloride ions, attracted to the channel by the counter electrode, which we'll talk about next, collect on top of the ion selective membrane, counteracting the positively charged hydrogen ions and creating a net positive charge in the channel. This turns on the ISFET and allows current to flow. Next we're going to talk about the counter electrode. The counter electrode is responsible for causing the negatively charged chloride ions to collect on top of the ion selective membrane and ultimately turn on the ISFET. It does this because when it is charged with a negative electrical charge, it attracts positively charged sodium ions, causing negatively charged chloride ions to be attracted to the ISFET. You can think about it like this. 
there has to be a balance to the ions. So if we collect more positive ions on the counter electrode, that means that there are more chloride ions, which are negative, to be attracted to the ISFET. Next, I want to talk a little bit more about how the electronics that drive the ISFET work. Their job is to keep a constant current running through the ISFET and a constant voltage across it. This is achieved primarily by this op amp, which adjusts the charge on the counter electrode in order to keep a constant current flowing through the ISFET. Now that we've gone over all the individual components, let's look at how the whole system works together. This op amp controls the amount of negative electric charge on the counter electrode. This amount of negative electric charge collects sodium ions, which controls the amount of chloride ions on top of the ion selective membrane. This in turn controls the amount of positive charge in the channel, which controls the amount of current flowing through the ISFET. This op amp automatically adjusts the counter electrode voltage to keep the voltage of the source at zero volts. This, by way of the resistor here, and this voltage source, thereby results in a constant current. Meanwhile, this voltage source keeps a constant voltage across the ISFET. Separate circuits, not shown, measure the amount of current flowing into the body and into the counter electrode. Finally, we're going to discuss the reference electrode and its associated electronics. It is the voltage on the reference electrode which is ultimately used to calculate pH. This circuit here is an op amp used to measure the voltage on the reference electrode without drawing very much current from it. Drawing too much current from it would upset its delicate measurement. The reason that the voltage on the reference electrode is ultimately a measure of pH is that it is effectively measuring the number of chloride ions that were needed to counteract the positive hydrogen ions and keep the ISFET in a constant bias condition. Okay, now that we've seen how all the pieces of the ISFET pH sensor work, let's look at the whole system together. It all starts with the ISFET itself. Recall that the ISFET needs a positively charged channel in order to have current flow through it. This positive charge is created by a negative charge on top of the ion selective membrane. This negative charge comes from chloride ions, which must be plentiful enough to cancel out the positive charge from any hydrogen ions and form the channel. These chloride ions are attracted to the ion selective membrane by the counter electrode. A negative charge on the counter electrode attracts positive sodium ions, creating an excess of chloride ions to be attracted to the surface of the ISFET. The voltage on the counter electrode is controlled by this op amp. This op amp measures the current flowing through the ISFET and adjusts the voltage on the counter electrode to keep it constant. At the same time, a voltage source keeps a constant voltage across the ISFET. Now that we understand how the ISFET is kept in constant bias, recall that the pH is actually measured from the number of chloride ions that were required to bring the ISFET into that constant bias state. This is measured in turn by the reference electrode. Due to the electrochemical properties of the silver silver chloride electrode, the voltage on it is proportional to the number of chloride ions that needed to be used to turn on the ISFET. However, hardly any current can be drawn from the silver silver chloride electrode without upsetting this delicate measurement. The purpose of this op amp is to measure that voltage without drawing much of any current from the silver silver chloride electrode. It is this final voltage, known as the reference voltage, which is used to calculate pH. Seabird's solid state pH technology is being used both in profiling floats and in moored CFET and CFOX sensors. 
We are really excited about this technology because it provides superior pH accuracy and resolution compared with traditional glass bulb based pH sensors. And because it does not rely on a liquid filled electrode, the solid state pH sensor is much more stable in seawater and does not require as frequent of servicing. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please reach out to the sales team at Seabird Scientific.